G'day there, Method students. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at 15C, which is um, measures of spread, which essentially we're focusing here on the variance and the standard deviation for continuous probability distributions. Um, so there's, again, a bit like the expected value, there's a formula for the variance um, that we use. The, there's sort of two versions of it, and, and which one you use can sort of just depend on what you think is going to be easier. Um, the one that's on the formula sheet, on the VCAR exam formula sheet, is the variance, um, so sigma squared, the variance, is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x minus the expected value squared times the function f of x. Um, so that's, I guess, the first way to find the variance. The other way, um, which I tend to prefer, but I guess it's not on the formula sheet, so um, you know you, you may not always remember this formula, is that the variance will equal to the integral of x squared times the function with respect to x minus, and at the end you put the expected value squared. One of the reasons I like this formula is because it matches basically how we did it with discrete variables, where it was the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all sort of squared, um, but either version of this is going to give you the same answer. Um, and as always, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So let's check this out and see how it works. Um, so we've got a continuous um, variable with a probability density function given by, how many times have we read that? Um, got our function here, and we have to determine the variance and the standard deviation to three decimal places. So we're going to find the variance first, and then we'll just square root that to get the standard deviation. Now, before we go and find the variance, whichever version of the formula you use, you need to know the mean first, right? So you, you always start by actually finding the mean um, or the expected value. So the mean is given by, and remember that's what we did in the last video in 15b, it's the integral um, of the function sort of over its all non-zero values, so four to five, um, of x times the function, so x times negative two x plus 10 with respect to x. Right, so this calculation here is gonna give us the mean um, I should have typed it in advance to save a bit of time. Apologies for this. I'm going to fast forward the next 20 seconds or so. You're welcome to. Uh, 4, 5, x times negative 2x plus 10 with respect to x. <clears throat> okay, uh, probably best to keep that in standard mode so we don't have to round anything off too early. Uh, so 13 on 3. So our expected value is 13 over 3. Okay. Okay. Um, now we can go to either one of these variance formulas, and like I said, it doesn't really matter um, which one you use. I can show you both on the calculator easily enough. Um, but the variance will be equal to, so the variance sigma squared will be equal to the integral. Um, let's start with this one. Um, so the integral from four to five of x minus the expected value, so 13 over three squared times the function, so times negative 2x plus 10 with respect to x. So this this integral here should give us the variance. Um, so let's pop that in the CAS. So it is, um, let me be lazy here again. So instead of just having x in front of the function like we did before, um, we're going to have x minus, so x minus 13 on 3 all squared. So it's going to sort of reuse the integral that's already there and it's x minus 13 on 3, all squared, and that gives us the, the variance, okay? Um, so that equals 1 over 18, and of course, the standard deviation, that's just the square root of the variance, so we can write that as the square root of 1 on 18, um, which is root 2 on 6. Okay, so, um, and as, just as promised as well, like we said, well, you can, you can also use this sort of alternative version of the formula, this one here. Um, if we were going to use that one, uh, then we would have had, let's quickly scribble it out here, sort of, um, or sigma squared would have equaled, in this example, the integral from 4 to 5 of um, x squared times negative 2x plus 10 with respect to x, right? So that's that part, minus 13 on 3 squared, and just to prove to you that I'm not making that up, um, if we take this down here, and instead of having that um, the expected value kind of in there with x, we just put x squared at the front, so the integral of x squared times the function, and then outside of the integral you put uh, minus 13 on 3 squared, um, we get the same value that we got before for the variance, right? So either one of those, um, this one and, and this one are going to work for you. This one, like I said, is probably the one that I use more often just because it's, it's done the same way that we did it with discrete probability. Um, and sometimes it's easy to just keep the things separate. But if you think that that first way we did it, you know, is easier and you, and you can look it up on the formula sheet and use it every time, then go for it. So both are going to work for you. Um, okay, this last little section, we've just got some um, 
I guess, extra rules that apply or affect the mean and the variance. Um, so if you if you think about a lot of these, essentially what we're talking about is like transforming our variable or transforming the function. Um, and so that obviously has an influence on what the expected value and the variance is going to be. Um, so we get a few different rules, and these are exactly the same as how they looked for discrete probability. So the expected value of a times x, if we multiply our variable by x, that actually multiplies the expected value by a. So the expected value of ax is equal to a times the expected value of x. Um, the expected value of x plus b is equal to, well, what, the, what that's going to do is just take the expected value of x and add b to it. It's a bit like saying, well, if you add 5 to your entire distribution, you're going to increase the mean by 5. Um, and therefore, like in com those two in combination would give us this sort of rule here. Um, then we've got variance rules. Now remember, variance is a measure of spread. So with variance, if you multiply your variable by um, a, that increases the variance by a factor of a squared, because the way that the variance is calculated is to square the differences from the mean. Um, however, if you take your variable and you add um, a constant to it, that doesn't in influence the spread, right? So the variance of x plus b is actually just the variance of x. Uh, and therefore, we get kind of this, combining those two ideas gives us this formula here. Uh, so here's a couple of practice questions. This one says, um, you know, continuous random variable x has a mean of 3 and a variance of 2. Determine, and we've got a few things to find out. First one's the standard deviation. Well, if we know the variance, what do we do to find the standard deviation? We square root it. So that just equals the square root of 2. It's nice and easy. This one here, the expected value of 3x minus 1. Well, we're going to use this sort of formula here and says this will equal 3 times the expected value of x minus 1. And so that will equal 3 times 3, because the expected value of x was 3, uh, minus 1, which of course is just 9 take 1, which is 8. All right, so that's great. Um, the variance of 2x plus 5. Well, remember that plus 5 won't do anything to the variance, but this times 2 will. So this will just equal 2 squared times the original variance of x. And so that's 2 mm -hmm. squared times 2, which of course is 4 times 2, which coincidentally is 8. That is just a coincidence. That's not meant to happen or anything like that. Um, this last one's an interesting one. We've got to find the expected value of x squared. Now, remember that with um, the way we think of the, the variance formula is that the, the variance of x is equal to the expected value um, of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared, right? That's actually exactly how we thought of this when we came to discrete probability. And we said before that the variance formula, um, even for continuous probability, can be represented the same way. So what does that mean? Well, that means actually the information that was given in the question told us the variance of x is 2. Um, the expected value of x squared is what we're trying to find, but we know from the information in the question that the mean or the expected value is 3. So this is just sort of 3 squared here. And now you can actually just solve this equation for the expected value of x squared. Right? Like that would be 2 equals the expected value of x squared minus 9. And if you add 9 to both sides, you'll get the expected value of x squared equals 11. So pretty tricky one, that last one. Um, but, you know, you can use a rearrangement of the variance formula to kind of find one missing number out of those three values. So a slightly unusual one to finish on, but um, sometimes nice to see those sorts of tricks because you never know when they'll pop up again.